Hi everyone, welcome to Shark AI. I am Chandan Shashwat and in this video I am going to talk about the Pandas. Now what is Pandas? The Pandas is an open source Python package that is most widely used in data science, data analysis and machine learning tasks. So basically uh, before feeding the data into the model we need to do some pre-processing with the data. So with the help of Pandas it is very easy to manipulate, manipulate the uh, big size of data, basically the multi-dimensional data, we can say. So what is that and how do we do it, do with the pandas that we will see with uh, several examples and what are the functions available, how to manipulate the data, what are the queries and everything we will go step by step. And, and as the definition says that it builds, builds on top of another package named numpy so numpy is another package uh, which uh, we will see and it is built over numpy so which provides support for multi-dimensional arrays so basically numpy provides support for the multi-dimensional arrays okay and one of the most popular data wrangling packages pandas works well with many other data science modules inside the python ecosystem so basically you can see that Pandas is a backbone for pre-processing the data before feeding into the model and we should uh, we should be very good if we are doing the data analysis uh, when we are feeding the data into the model. So basically uh, the most common term in the Pandas is what is data frame. So a Pandas data frame is two dimensional data structure like a two dimensional array or a table with the rows and column so data frame is basically uh, this one is better that table with rows and columns so in the excel sheet if we are seeing the rows and the column so the whole thing is called as the data frame so let's see that uh, with the functions available in the pandas how it works so you can import you can always import pandas first you have to install pandas so if you have not installed so you can get reference from the internet that how to install pandas in the uh, jupyter so basically with the pip command you can install the pandas and you can import it like import pandas as i'm importing as pd okay pd stands for pandas so and this is the way how you call any of the data set so I am using my own uh, Mac so when you are calling into the windows you have to if you are giving it a path then you have to provide it R before the path because in the Mac if you are if I am providing a path it uh, it doesn't need the hard-coded value of R okay and if you are uh, if you are if your data set is available in the working directory then you can directly call it from here okay so this is uh, pandas there are many things you can say that pd and just press the tab and then you have available functions inside the pandas okay so i am just using i already have a csv okay which is hard to okay so i am just reading that csv file using the pandas and i am storing it in the data frame okay hope you understand this so when i will print the df in the cell i'm just writing the df and just trying to print so you can see here what are the datas what are the columns in the data set and how many rows and columns are there so 919 rows and 12 columns and you can see what are the columns and what are the rows here so this is the how the data frame uh, looks so data frame if we talk then whenever you are uh, doing the uh, pre-processing with the uh, for the model building then you will be getting 1 gb of data 2 gb of data so in the time of processing it takes 
मच टाइम टू लोड सो इफ यू आर डूइंग एनीथिंग रॉन्ग विथ द ओरिजिनल डेटा सेट इट विल बी वेरी हार्ड टू चेंज इट ओके सो वॉट यू डू वेन एवर यू आर इम्पोर्टिंग एनी डेटा जस्ट कीप इट इन टू अ सेपरेट वन डी एफ ओरिजिनल ओके एंड कीप इट असाइड ओके एंड कॉपी दिस डी एफ अंडर स्कोर ओरिजिनल डॉट कॉपी ओके सो कॉपी कमांड इज बेसिकली कॉपिंग द डी एफ ओरिजिनल टू डी एफ विदाउट कॉपिंग द रेफरेंस इट विल क्रिएट अनदर रेफरेंस ऑफ इट सो वेन एवर यू चेंज डी एफ डी एफ ओरिजिनल विल नॉट गेट चेंज सो दिस इज द बिग एडवांटेज ऑफ दिस कॉपी फंक्शन हियर ओके वी विल सी हाउ सो आई जस्ट कॉपेड इट एंड जस्ट प्रिंटिंग दिस डी एफ सो इट विल बी सेम ओके सो वेन एवर यू हैव टेन जी बी और ट्वेल्व जी बी ऑफ डेटा सो यू विल नॉट बी एबल टू बेसिकली यू जस्ट वॉन्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ द डेटा इज यू जस्ट डोंट वॉन्ट टू गो एंड रीड ऑल द डेटा ओके सो देर इज सम कमांड्स इफ यू वॉन्ट टू सी द टॉप टॉप फाइव कमांड्स सो वेन एवर यू डू दिस हेड इट विल गिव यू द टॉप फाइव रोज ओके इन साइड द हेड यू कैन पास दैट ओके फ्रॉम द हेड आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू वैल्यूज ओके फ्रॉम द टॉप टू आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू सी देन इट विल जस्ट रिटर्न यू द टू वैल्यूज सो दिस इज हाउ द हेड वर्क द सेम वे वी हैव टेल फंक्शन टी ए आई एल सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू टेल देन यू कैन सी इट इज रिटर्निंग द लास्ट फाइव वैल्यूज ओके सिंस नाइन हंड्रेड नाइनटीन रोज आर देर सो इट स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द जीरो सो वी हैव नाइन वन एट सो यू वॉन्ट टू लास्ट सी द लास्ट टू रोज देन इट इज नाइन वन सेवन नाइन वन एट सो दिस इज द लास्ट रोज सो दिस इज द हेड एंड टेल कमांड ओके नाउ यू वॉन्ट टू नो एनी पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम दैट यू हैव रिमूव सम ऑफ द कॉलम्स एंड सम ऑफ द सम ऑफ द रोज सो यू वॉन्ट टू सी वॉट इज द शेप ऑफ योर डेटा फ्रेम नाउ सो यू कैन ऑलवेज टाइम दिस कमांड शेप ओके एंड एग्जीक्यूट सो इट इज सेइंग दैट आई हैव टोटल नाइन हंड्रेड नाइनटीन रोज एंड ट्वेल्व कॉलम्स सो शेप इज ऑल्सो वेरी हेल्पफुल यू वॉन्ट टू नो वॉट आर द कॉलम्स अवेलेबल सो सपोज वी हैव हियर ओनली फ्यू कॉलम्स ओके बट इन द रियल सिनारियोज वेन वी आर गेटिंग द फाइव हंड्रेड एंड सिक्स हंड्रेड कॉलम्स सो यू विल नॉट बी एबल टू डेफिनेटली सी इन टू वन स्क्रीन ओके एंड इट विल नॉट यू विल नॉट बी एबल टू सी हियर ओके सो इन दोज केसेस यू जस्ट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू सी द कॉलम्स देन यू जस्ट गो विद टी एफ डॉट कॉलम्स ओके data frame dot columns so it's not a function so it is returning you with all your columns what are the co columns available in the data set okay another command is df dot info okay so basically it will give you the you can see that what are the columns available what are the data types okay how many non null values are there okay so you can see that age we have all the values available in the column but in the resting bp we have two missing values in the rows 917 and 917 so two values are missing 918 that means one value is missing one value is missing so these are the missing values then what are the memory uses and then these are the data types okay so info will give you a complete information of your uh, data frame okay so now let's check that how to uh, check the null values okay so as i am saying here that we have two missing values here 
917 so another method to check for that is df dot is null dot sum so it will uh, calculate all the null values uh, all the null values column wise okay so see here the resting bp is saying the two values are missing cholesterol is two values are missing and one one values are missing so as it was saying here okay another one is <coughs> like uh, df dot describe so <clears throat> this is applicable for only the continuous values okay like you can see here the continuous values will give you here the age and the fasting bps and the heart disease age resting bp okay resting bp is also float and then cholesterol and then fasting bp then max hr so these are so what basically you get with those continuous values is you'll get count how many are there mean hope you uh, know what is the mean so mean is basically uh, number of uh, total value divided by the number of values so that will give you the mean and this one uh, will give you the standard deviation okay what is the minimum value this is 25 percent quartile 50 percent 75 percent and the maximum value so these information this df dot describe will give okay now uh, standard deviation uh, i'm not explaining here so when we will start with the machine learning techniques and basically we will see first this one <clears throat> for linear regression because linear regression it is necessary so i will tell you at that time okay so now when it comes to the column suppose i'm taking one column df dot i'm taking this um, sex take it as okay so you can always uh, refer any of your column like this okay i think the name is capital s so this is a uh, case sensitive so always remember that uh, whenever you are doing it and you can also call it like a def dot cx okay so both ways work uh, you can call any of the data frame dot column okay and the values will be printed or you can call it like brackets and then the column name okay so it will print so this is printing the uh, column six and i just want to know that uh, how many uh, how many variations are there so i'm just writing here df cx dot so in unique is a command which gives you that how many unique values are there <clears throat> how many unique values are uh, in this column okay so it's saying that we have two unique commands okay but what are those unique commands that will be given by df and if i go here like six dot value count okay value counts so value counts will uh, give you that in that column 
how many males are there it's saying that 725 how many females are there 194 so this is how we determine that how many unique values are there in that column and what are those <clears throat> unique values okay you can try it with any other columns if i take just <clears throat> age also so tf dot age dot and unique Fifty. Okay, and if I just want to check the value counts, so these are the values. So it's saying that the fifty-four, <clears throat> age fifty-four has fifty-one values. Age fifty-eight has forty-two values. Age fifty-five has forty-one values, and so on. We can see age seventy-three. We have only one value. So this is what it is saying. Okay. Now how to check the duplicate values if you have any in your data set? So. You just do this df dot duplicated dot sum one. So it is saying that uh, you have one uh, duplicate column, duplicated column. Okay. And now, if we want to check that uh, which are the duplicated values. Then df dot duplicated and it will give you the row which is the duplicated row. Okay, if you want to delete the duplicated value, then df is equals to df dot duplicated df dot drop duplicates. Okay, and it will uh, delete all the duplicated values. Okay, so now if I check df dot duplicated dot sum, then you can see zero. So definitely that value got deleted. And if I check the shape of uh, data frame now. So now it's nine hundred eighteen by twelve, and earlier it was nine hundred nineteen and twelve. So one duplicated rows got deleted here. So this is how the drop duplicate works. And uh, uh, so now the missing values. So in our data set we have some missing values also. So let's find out that how to find the missing values. and how to fill them so uh, for missing values you can always type df dot is null okay dot sum so you can see that how many missing values are there now uh, either we can uh, delete these values but uh, as a data scientist we should not always delete because if this value this one value is missing in the resting bp and we are deleting the whole row so we are losing the information so that is basically that should not happen unless you have a lot of data i mean you can go for it but yeah as a data scientist we should always look for an alternative how we can because of one data you cannot delete all the data but because of all data you can substitute one data so it's better to substitute this null value with the values available okay and how we can do that so 
suppose in the resting BP okay so resting BP type of resting BP is as we have seen resting BP was also float okay so what we'll do we'll replace this value by mode or the media me, mean or the median okay any of the value you can do but if it's a continuous values then better go for the uh, median value or the mode value median value or the mean value okay so mean is basically your uh, average median is the middle value and the mode is the most frequent value so mode we basically substitute when uh, when you have categorical values where based on the frequency we substitute the missing value median and the mean these are the two things you have to consider so if it's a perfectly normal distribution then uh, you don't really care that what you are going to fill it is media uh, it is the median or it is the mean you can substitute with anything but when the distribution is little bit skewed i mean uh, if it's a right skewed then uh, it will be like uh, most of the value will be in the right side and if it's a left skewed then most of the value will be in the left side okay so based on your knowledge as you grow on when i will be covering the uh, machine learning techniques then i will definitely tell you that how to fill these values but till now just we are filling these values with the uh, mean value okay so it's a df and the column is resting bp which equals to df resting bp dot fill na and how we are filling so we are filling with the same column okay dot mean okay and in place equals to true okay so now our missing values in the resting bp it will be substituted by the mean value of it okay and what was the mean value of it so as we have seen in the describe uh, function that mean value of it is 132.39 so the same value it will be get substituted and if you want to just check what are the null values we have now okay actually yeah so the resting bp is now zero we do not have actually it, it doesn't return anything okay so i was just catching it into the uh, data frame of this column so it was giving me the it was just filling these two values and keeping everything as blank okay so actually i should not do that so uh, resting bp as you can see now it is zero so the same way we can also replace the cholesterol max hr and resting ecg okay, so this is how uh, we replace the na values but there are a lot of methods to uh, replace this na values this is one of them okay as we uh, 
go deeper into the session we will uh, definitely see that what are the methods to replace these values so now uh, we'll see now how the set index will work so as you can see if i just try to print the value of df you we you can see that we have the uh, before the age we have indexes available okay so these are called the indexes so if you don't provide any additional indexes it will be here okay so but you can change it anytime you want and how you can change is just do it that df dot set index and give the indexes so i'm just making one of uh, the column as it index and i'm making as age only as my index okay so i'm just passing it as df and age okay so you can see here this is the age value and this is the index so now this age become our index and these are the index values so this is like this you can change any of the uh, index values okay now this is uh, since we have worked with the data frame which we have imported and in the place of uh, read csv you have uh, read excel so you can always check and play around with the available things so you can always read a csv file excel file feather fwf json pickle so read sql so all these uh, data you can read using the panda so that's what these things makes the pandas more efficient and uh, more you can say uh, available so now we will create our own uh, data frame and we will try to manipulate uh, using it okay so first thing is that how to create our own data frame okay so i am just creating a data frame uh, i have suppose uh, there are several ways of creating the uh, data frame but how i am creating is like uh, i am just following one of the method that is df pd dot and uh, you can always create a md data frame as df is equals to pd dot i think it's capital d data frame so now it's it will uh, give you a empty data frame okay so this is the way how you create a empty data frame okay so this is pd dot data frame okay and we are just going to fill the values so first we are going to pass it as name suppose okay and i am writing here something a and then b then you can see here that c and uh, d okay okay now it is correct and second one is just passing here some age one two three four since four items are there and the name of the columns okay so columns actually columns we have to pass after the dictionary okay the okay, columns is equals to I'm just giving it as name and page okay and i executed it now if i try to print this df it will give me the index the name and the age we'll do some uh, data manipulation 
in this data frame so first uh, one more thing actually you should know what is the series so series is basically one dimensional uh, labeled array capable of holding data of any type okay so if i say that it is or uh, series is pd dot series and give some numbers here one two three four okay and if i print the data so basically this is called series okay one dimensional labeled data series and this is also your uh, <coughs> indexes and you can always change this indexes you can give your own indexes if you want to give this indexes here then you can always give the indexes is equals to okay suppose you are giving as a p c d okay so you can see the indexes also got got changed so this is your uh, series <clears throat> so now we are going to talk about lock and i lock so these command are basically used for slicing the data frame okay so what do i mean by slicing the data frames let's see so as we have created our own data frame uh, i have created a own data frame because it will be easy for understanding okay later on when we will be using the manipulation in the uh, main data frame or the big bigger data frame then we'll see all these operations we have to do because data manipulation is the main technique for the data science so as for the teaching purpose i'm showing you on a smaller data set so as you can see the df which we created is this so if i have to do df dot lock so if i have to select the only the age okay and the column 0 to 2 okay so this is saying that you are selecting all the rows okay and this is your columns so columns if i am giving here only the age so now it means that all the rows and the only the age age column okay so it will give all the rows and the age column okay now how to slice the so this is how to slice the column okay so we are able to slice the column so how to understand you can understand by the uh, using this comma before the comma everything comes that comes to the part of rows and after that it's the part of the columns so this is selecting the columns now selecting the rows is df dot lock okay so uh, the syntax is start what from what position you have to start and then stop and if you have something to uh, step you can say how many steps you want to go so this is what is the syntax for uh, rows slicing the rows and this is the columns okay columns all your columns so this will definitely give you an error but So now slice it df dot lock i'm starting for the position one i'm going to three um till three okay and taking column as h so you can see we have taken one and we'll consider the both one and three so it's starting from one two and three 
and printing the age column only if you want to print both the columns then you can definitely give you the age and the name okay so you can see that the data frame which is original has a name here and the age in this side i have given the columns age first and the name second then this age is coming here and name is coming here and if you want to go with the steps then you definitely go uh, 0 to 3 go step 2 that means take the first record skip the second one go to the third record and so on so this is you can see it has taken the zeroth record it skipped the first record then took the second record skip the third record but there is nothing as fourth record so it it is just printing zero and the second record so this is how your lock works okay and the similar way the uh, i lock works i'll show you that how the i lock works so i lock is only at the place of uh, column names we are only passing the index so df dot i lock the same thing okay So index of age is since it's a it's a, it's in the position it's in the position zero and it's a position one. So we are <coughs> taking it as zero and one. If we want to <coughs> print both the values. Okay, actually, <clears throat> I have to do this I lock. So, as you already saw that when I uh, tried using the index with the lock, it gave me an error. But when I change it to the I lock, it is printing the same result. Okay, as it is printing here. Okay. <clears throat> So this is how the lock and i lock works okay now we'll see the filtering the data okay so uh, let's say that so now my df is this okay one more thing that <clears throat> so this lock and i lock you see i did so many operations my but my df is still same so you have to catch it as like this okay otherwise it will the changes will not be reflected in in your current data frame okay so this is my data frame i just want to run a simple query where my age is equals to 2 and name is equals to b okay so that i can get that column so there are several ways to do let's see that <clears throat> how many we can see so df is equals to syntax is df bracket and df dot better write it in this and df dot name equals to equals to b okay and logical operator and uh, df dot age equals to equals to 2 okay so let's execute this now try to print the df so you can see we got our uh, 
रो वैल्यू सो दिस इज नेम इज इक्वल्स टू बी एंड एज इक्वल्स टू टू ओके सो दिस इज वन ऑफ द वे टू क्वेरी द वैल्यू अनदर वे इज बट माई डी एफ टोट सो लेट्स कीप इट नाउ डी एफ so using the query operator also we do this that uh, tf dot query okay then write it like sql query name equals to equals to b and age equals to equals to actually this please mix literal okay so this is also returning the same thing okay so in the Uh, df you can also use that df dot query and you can write like sql the name is equals to b and age is equals to two okay and it is returning the same thing so i prefer basically uh, this method to filter the data frames now uh, here i have created two data sets df1 and df2 because the earlier data frame which we were using i will not be able to filter or to show you some of the operations which are necessary uh, like uh, any name starting with a or any uh, to filter the data frame by the names which contain suresh and mukesh so i'll show you these operations here so let's see that how to uh, find the uh, columns where we are having some names so suppose i am filtering on the df1 so uh, suppose i have a uh, name is equals to uh, suresh okay suresh and mukesh okay and i have to find this these two names in the df1 so what i'll do is i have just uh, taken these names in a list and then i am going to use at use this one as df1 and then df1 dot the column name is name dot is in and here the names okay the actually the array variable which we are using here so the name so you can see that it is returning the uh, row of suresh and mukesh okay so this is the way of uh, filtering the data frame based on the column values okay uh, suppose i have to find the uh, the rows or the names which are starting with s so as i can see that s is only Sur suresh a is three values ajit amit and akash so let's see that df1 df1 dot name dot str 
dot start with and just give the start value of suppose a i just want to filter all the values of the column name uh, column name where the starting letter is a so i just want to filter this so you can see it is returning ajit amit and akash if starting with s then it will return the value of suresh okay suppose if i don't want the values of the name which are starting from s so just i have to use this tilt here and if i execute then it will return everything except the name starting with s okay and if it is a then you can see it is returning all the values except a so this is actually this this, this is equals to not equals to a or the not operation with this so this is the use of this tilt now we'll try to find the n largest and n smallest from a data set so let's see that we have uh, as you can see the df1 we have these values in the df1 so we'll just try to filter df1 dot n largest okay n largest of age okay i'll just filter the two values and from the column age okay age so the largest value is 65 and 40 so it will return these two values actually this is not the right bracket okay so it is returning this age is 65 and 40 as you can see you want to uh, print the three values then you can print these three values and it is returning with the index and uh, the similarly if you want the lowest value then you can also do that df1 that then smallest and go for uh, two values in the age so it will return you the two smallest value in the age so you can always filter with the column values uh, and suppose if you have to filter the data frame uh, so suppose this one is my, my df1 and i just want to filter it then df1 dot short values okay and just give the columns in which we want to short suppose by the age i want to short then see by the age it is shorting okay okay actually it's not df1 okay so as you can see it is shorting by age you want to sort by two columns like age and salary then we can do that salary okay so you can see here it is sorting with the age and the salary okay now uh, it comes to the data aggregation so what is data aggregation suppose i want the minimum and maximum value of age and i want a sum of salary minimum of salary so how we can do that is uh, so as you know that our df1 is this so i'll just write df dot aggregate df dot aggregate and then uh, age okay age so what do you want from age so i want minimum value and the maximum value okay minimum value and the maximum value okay now from the salary i want sum minimum and maximum okay so 
as you can see it is returning the value of minimum maximum and the sum so we ask from age what is minimum and maximum so in the age it is returning the minimum is 19 and maximum is 65 the same thing it is returning from salary that is 100 and 500 sum it is returning n a n because we have not asked from the age so and the salary what is the sum of the salary so it is returning as the uh, sum of salary so this is how the data aggregation works now we'll see the uh, group by okay so you know we have this tf1 dot group by let's say we are grouping by city okay city dot mean city city actually c is capital so city dot mean so we have grouped it by city so as you can see that uh, city we have bangalore delhi pune hyderabad bangalore and delhi so what is the uh, mean salary so how many times the delhi is here so you can see that delhi is only one bangalore is two times 200 plus 700 700 divided by 2 that is 350 so as you can see it grouped by salary so grouped by city so bangalore is actually it is coming two times here bangalore one is 200 and bangalore one is 500 so it is printing only one bangalore and salary it is printing as a mean that is 300 plus 500 plus 200 divided by 2 that is 350 and other remainings are coming as one so it is printing just the salary okay so this is how the group by works you can also uh, play with like mean and uh, median minimum value so all these you can uh, you can do these operations just simply go for the tab and look what are the operations available we have and you can see we have plenty of operations here okay so now uh, we are going to see the merge operation so we have two data sets which we created earlier the df1 and df2 okay so now we are going to use this merge merge is like merging the two uh, data frames based on some column okay so uh, basically we have inner uh, like sqls we have inner join outer join left outer join so the similar way it works here we have the two data frames and we are going to do all these operations here so let's say that df is equals to we are going to do the inner merge then pd dot merge okay df1 uh, df2 okay how is equals to just give here the inner and then key okay based on uh, which key we are going to merge the these two data frames so we are merging based on the name so this is the df value okay so you can see that inner how the inner works is all the values in this data frame and all the values in this data frame okay so both if the values are there in both the data frame then it will take the value you can see that pankaj and visal got excluded here because these two values are only pankaj is only in this data frame and visal is, in, is only in this data frame not in both the places so uh, our inner merge just excluded these two values okay now suppose that we have to uh, do the left outer join on uh, left outer merge so at the place of inner just use the left okay and then now check the df so how the left works is so this is my left table so all the records in the left 
will be considered and corresponding values of y all the values in the left and corresponding values of y will be taken so you can see here all the values of left so df1 df1 is basically my left so you can see that uh, suresh mukesh till pankaj i have the values and i have all these values okay but pankaj is only in the df1 so we do not have these two values okay and as you can see that in the df2 we have vishal which is not considered here okay if you make it right then vishal will be considered and pankaj will be omitted so you can see that vishal is included pankaj is not and if you do it like uh, uh, only outer okay so all the values will be considered so you can see that pankaj is also considered and vikas vishal is also considered but you can see that <coughs> pankaj has this missing value because it has only in one data frame and vishal has this missing value because it is in another data frame so this is how the merge works now we'll talk about the apply function so this is a uh, apply function is the most powerful technique in the data science which we are going to see now by using the apply you can uh, you can uh, manipulate any of the row or any of the column it basically gives us the control in both the sides okay you can uh, you can filter or you can uh, do some operations in the column wise as well as in the row wise so uh, suppose that i have to just double the age okay so i am just creating a function like df is equals to double and i'm passing here something argument like x then i am just returning uh, x into 2 okay okay and uh, df uh, age underscore new so anytime you need any uh, new column just give here the column name and it will create a new column okay so i'm creating a new column age underscore name and uh, df actually df1 okay because we are doing the operation in the df1 so df1 and the h dot apply apply and double okay so what it will do it will take the age value one by one so it will take this age 35 pass 35 and return it 35 into 2 and create it here so it will be 70 here 80 here 48 here so likewise it will work so if i execute this okay and i will show you what is there in the df1 so you can see that df1 all the age values got multiplied by 2 okay so this is how the apply function works and uh, in the real uh, in the data science you want to you will be seeing this a lot of places apply function this is the most powerful technique to work with any uh, column or the rows so now how it works in the row so let's say that i have to uh, change the age of a person if the name matches so suppose if the name is suresh i have to make the name age as 10 okay so let's define a function uh, t o u b and we have x as an argument then if x dot name equals to equals to suresh suresh then we are uh, x dot a g e is equals to 10 okay and then we are 
return in x okay and execute this one and then df1 is equals to df1 dot apply and the name of the function dou b and the axis is equals to 1 okay so now if we see the df1 so you can see that earlier the Suresh age was 35 now the Suresh age is 10 okay so this is how it works in the row wise okay so this is the syntax basically for the apply function apply and the function you have to pass and axis is equals to 1 or 0 based on row and the column you want to apply okay one more important thing is uh, iter rows so how the iter row works so sometimes what happens you have to uh, you have to iterate over your data frame then how will you do that because normal uh, for loop is not going to work in the data frame so how we have to do is suppose i have to iterate over this data frame so we have to do that for index and the row in df dot iter rows okay so basically uh, remember this that uh, df dot iter rows we have to iterate over and it helps us to iterate over the data frames okay so if suppose the row of age uh, is equals to is equals to 10 since we have already cha changed for Suresh so 10 then df of age age of index is equals to 1 or uh, let's make it 11 okay so this will basically give you the index of the rows where we are iterating okay this is like this is the zeroth index this is the first index and this will give you the complete row value so this is the complete row value okay so i'm just checking the row if the uh, row age wherever it is if it has the value 10 then we are changing it to 11 okay so i just executed it and now oh actually it's a df1 so we have to do it df1 because we are iterating over the df1 so okay now df1 so you can see the earlier the age was 10 now after the iterating over it the age got changed to the 11 so this is how the uh, iter rows works and this is also a powerful technique for the pandas okay now uh, as we have seen in the python example that uh, how to use the lambda functions so if uh, we have to apply directly lambda function into our data frame how you can do that so suppose that df <coughs> age is equals to mm, df dot age dot apply and the lambda function lambda argument and the expression x percentage x into 2 okay you can just multiply with 2 the age so this is how the lambda function works basically this is also using the apply function we are using the lambda function so we are just multiplying the age with 2 
in the df actually it's not df it's a df1 my mistake df1 so now if you check the df1 so you can see it got doubled 11 80 48 130 and 60 so this is how the lambda function works if you have not seen the lambda functions then refer my previous video of advanced functions in python yeah so this is all about the pandas hope you like the video uh, next video we will meet with the machine learning technique we will start with the linear regression so yeah we will see that thank you